Um, so what I also did is I took a little bit more um, tape from your station and we looked at some of the tools that you guys use. Mm -hmm. So if I could go ahead and get um, some tape for that and we also have some drills. So um, if you guys could watch this. So what exactly is going on here? They're just coming back from a run? Yeah, th that's the paramedic rescue. They're backing up, at, you know, per our safety backing up policy. We'll have the other guy back up, uh, make sure nobody's back there. Uh, this is a tool that truck companies carry. It's called a rubbish hook. It's about uh, <laughs> six, <laughs> six feet long. Uh, we use it to, to sound the roof as, you know, right there, I'm kind of pretending to hit the floor to check, to test the roof, make sure it's not burned out. Uh, the AO on the truck will cut with what here, we have a chainsaw, um, and then we use the rubbish hook to pull the wood and the composition off so we can ventilate the, uh, the building. Uh, truck companies also carry right here, it's, uh, it's called the Homatro equipment, but everybody on television sees it, called the Jaws of Life. Um, so that's what, you know, firemen do that too, physical rescues is what we call it, if somebody's pinned or trapped inside of a car. Uh, or a vehicle. We have special heavy-duty tools, cutters here to cut off doors, uh, hinges, um, different, you know, all kinds of metal, cuts several thousands of pounds. Uh, other responsibilities, we have forcible entry. These are called rotary saws. Uh, we have blades to cut metal, wood, lexin, uh, mater building materials like brick, stone, masonry. Um, and then other tools in the compartment here. Uh, every fireman has their own axe. Their guys will carry their personalized axe that they'll buy, um, or they have one assigned to each position. Uh, axe is a very versatile tool we can use, you know, to cut if the chainsaw breaks um, on the roof. Other tools we have, it's called a hooligan. It's used for prying and forcing open doors, just, you know, different challenges that we have in the city and you know apartments houses commercial buildings different types of doors we have special tools to get in uh, you know all the way basic down to a sledgehammer there in my left hand uh, for you know bashing breaking in doors windows um, here these are my turnout pants turnout boots that every fireman's issued <coughs> our station's lucky it's two-story we have a pole um, for quick access from the second floor to the first floor if we get a run. Uh, this is me suiting up and for a structure fire. My turnout pants and my boots are sitting by the rig in the ready position. My firefighting hood goes on and then I throw on my turnout coat. Uh, by this time, you know, the doors are up, everybody's on. The engineer, like Jeff, he's already got the rig started. He's got the lights on. He knows where he's going. Um, same thing happening here, however, this is just the tillerman position. He, he steers the trailer portion of the truck company with the AO, AO excuse me, who drives the tractor. Uh, the tillerman's a lot quicker. He has to get up. I'm standing up there on top so I can see the AO on the other side. He's jumping in the rig to start it. Um, and so I get in the, you know, my tillerman bucket is what we call it, shut the door and put my axe on and then take off so it's well, quick. It sounds like there's a lot of things to know. <laughs> he makes it sound easy you know uh, when the new recruits come on the job in the first several years they're really they're tested every day and Jeffrey is saying he's got about three years on so he's been tested really hard and it's not just picking up the tool and going out and using it there's so many hazards with these tools and one slip of something you can lose an arm a finger uh, you're seeing problems with uh, the, fi the cars on fire, um, airbags cutting into an area that deploys the airbag, and all these things you have to be aware of. Mm -hmm. Side curtains when we're cutting the roof off. And so there's a lot more detailed in the training to be able to use this equipment without getting hurt. Well, you definitely need a big toolbox. <laughs> <laughs> we have one. But, um, so now, what could you tell me, um, how competitive is it to become a fireman right now? Because I know the state of the economy, it's, it's so tough. And I know you were saying before, I mean, it, it's a hard time right now. Yeah, we're still uh, having classes. Now, it's changed since I've came on. And I think you're always going to see it being very competitive to become a firefighter. Mm -hmm. And you have a lot of people that want to come on with very few positions. And uh, for anyone that's interested in becoming a firefighter, you really got to devote a lot of time to it. Mm 
And if you're serious about it, you need to go into the local fire station and talk to them and find out about that department. As we could talk for a long, long time on what it takes to get in there and, you know, schooling to uh, CPAT and physical agilities and continuing testing. There's going to be a lot of letdown because you're not going to hear anything for a long time. You just need to be persistent and, and try anywhere. Mm -hmm. It's very difficult to get on and you can't just put all your eggs in one basket and go for one department. You got to try for city, you got to try for county, you got to go to Ventura, you got to go all over, you got to keep taking tests. Persistence. You got it. Now, I, what I'd like to know is every year <clears throat> you save lives, you save homes, you save land. What does it feel like to be a hero? Oh, um, I don't know if you call us heroes. I mean, we're just, you know, like I you say, we're, we're doing our job. That's what it, what it's necessary. It's awesome. Like Jeff was saying, someone comes in and thanks you for saving their family member or their, or their own life. Uh, people, you know, thank you for saving my house or, you know, my dog, my kid. It's, uh, it's awesome. It's, there's no greater feeling in the world than having that feeling of a job well done that you, uh, you made a difference in someone's life, whether that was, you know, saving their house or someone's life. So it's extraordinary. I can't, I can't describe how great it feels. It's awesome. It's self-rewarding. Self-rewarding. You know, because not all the time people are coming back in and thanking you. Um, you know, for instance, when we're in Katrina, uh, when we got down there, um, there weren't a lot of rescues happening by the time our team got in there. I think we only affected a few rescues. But everyone was told to leave their houses. So what we were doing is we were coming into the houses, making entry, going in there, places ruined, but people's pets were trapped inside the house. And so we saw a lot of uh, dead animals that didn't have water or food. So by opening up the doors and getting in there, we started seeing some of the pets. Mm -hmm. I remember this one, this puppy was up in the bathroom, up in the second store, or the second story. So he had drank all the toilet water and there was nothing. So I went searching through the house and went up there and started hearing some scratching noise. So came down in the kitchen, took my knife, cut open a can of uh, corn or something to give to the dog. But we were doing a lot of things like that. I know these people got their animals back at some point because we would say, hey, we found the dog at this house. We opened the door to let him out. And then other people would go in there and rescue the animals. So I'm, I'm sure these people were real thankful for you know, anything that they had left. All of your when we're out there and uh, you know that's an incredible story I'm so glad that you guys were with us today and to hear your stories and so we could all know a little bit more about firefighters and what it takes to be one but unfortunately we're all at a time today so thank you very much for joining us this is Kristen Fourier for On Point So would you guys like any of your family members to become firefighters, maybe follow in your footsteps? Sure. I have two kids and yeah. it'd be a real kick to see my son come through, but right now he's, uh, he's young, he's 12 years old and uh, he hasn't shown <laughs> anything towards it. He loves to come to the fire station, he loves to eat the sweets, he loves to run on the equipment, but uh, I haven't had him say, hey dad, I want to do that someday, but I would really enjoy for him to follow my footsteps.